Welcome to RK Tutorials. Solutions to Engineering Mechanics, 5th edition by S. Demoshenko, D. H. Eng, J. V. Rao, Sukumar, Party. In this tutorial, we will discuss problem set 2.3 and problem number 2.26. What axial forces does the vertical load P induced in the members of the system shown in the figure? neglect the weights of the members themselves and assume an ideal hinge at A and a perfectly flexible string BC. That means the weight P is supported by the string BC and a bar AB. Now the total system is under equilibrium. What are the various forces that are developed? inside these two members is our interest. In order to proceed further, let if the system is consisting of any strings, ropes, struts or cables, the force is along the string and it is away from the support. That means if you consider string BC and if you look at from point B, the force is away from B like this and the force is away from C like this. So it is the tensile forces. Similarly, we will assume that if at all is there any bar is there in the system, the force is also along the bar. First, let us assume that this bar is in tension. That means if you look at from point B, the force is away from point B. If you consider like that and if you get positive answer at the end our initial assumption is right but if you get negative that means whatever the direction we assumed initially then that is wrong we need to change the direction now with these concepts let us go to the solution of this problem let us consider the point b what are the various forces that are acting at point b of course, the self weight of this load that is P and we are assuming that the rod is in tension. That's why when you are looking from point B, the force is away from point B and let that magnitude of that force is S2. Similarly, the string is in tension and when we look at from point B, the force is along BC and it is away from point B. That means there are total three forces that are acting at point B. So if you draw the free body diagram at B and if you transfer all these forces onto separate XY plane. Now I transferred the force P. Now I am transferring the force S2 in the bar AB and the force in BC, S1. Initially, we are assuming that all these forces are tensile forces. That's why the force direction from point B, it, it is away from the point B. And also given that the angle between string and the bar is alpha. That means the angle between S1 and S2 is alpha. Now, just consider this system. This system is consisting of three forces. All three forces are meeting at a particular point and all three forces are divergent. Hence, I can apply the concept of sign rule. I have prepared a separate video on sign rule. Please watch it from RK Tutorials. Now, if you apply the concept of sign rule, now according to that, P divided by the angle between the other two forces. What are the other two forces? S1 and S2. What is the angle between those two forces? Alpha. So P by sin alpha is equal to S1 divided by the angle between the other two forces. That is, what is the angle between the other two forces? S2 and P is 90 degrees. Hence, it is S1 by sin 90. That is equal to S2 divided by 
angle between the other two forces total must be equal to 360. That means the other two forces are P and S1. The angle between the other two forces, this becomes 270 minus alpha. So that the total becomes 360 degrees. Hence, I can write the equation S2 divided by sine 270 minus alpha. Now, take two expressions one by one. First, you take these two expressions. P by sin alpha is equal to S1 by sin 90. You know sin 90 is equal to 1. Or S1 is equal to P by sin alpha, which is nothing but P cosecant alpha. Since initially we are assuming this is in tension and here I am getting positive direction, hence it is in tension. Let us consider S2. That means take these two expressions. If you take these two expressions, P by, let me write here, P by sin alpha is equal to S2 divided by sin 270 minus alpha is minus cos alpha or S2 is equal to S2 is equal to minus P into cos alpha by sin alpha or nothing but minus P into cot alpha. So this is initially we assumed it is as tension. But since I got the value is negative, so the initial initial assumed direction of tensile is wrong. Hence, S1 is equal to P into cot alpha. Compression is the answer. Now, you can also solve this problem by using the concept of method of resolution. The concept of force resolution I already prepared in video. Please watch it from RK Tutorials. Let us resolve all these forces into XY plane. The P is along vertical axis. So, P it need not to resolve and S2 is along x axis. S2 you need not to resolve. I can directly take it. But now S1 this makes an angle alpha with the horizontal. This you can resolve along x and y axis. S1 makes alpha with the x axis. Hence the x component or the horizontal component is S1 cos alpha. The other one is sin alpha. So here you can see the horizontal component of S1 is S1 cos alpha and the vertical component is S1 sin alpha. Now let us apply the equilibrium equation sigma Fy is equal to 0. I will take the upward positives, upward direction is positive. That means S1 into sin alpha is equal to P or S1 is equal to P into cosecant alpha. Since I got positive value, whatever the initial assumed direction is correct, hence S1 is equal to P cosecant alpha, that is tensile. Now let us consider the sigma Fx is equal to 0. I will consider this direction is my positive direction because both of my forces are acting in the same direction. Hence, I can write S1 cos alpha plus S2 is equal to 0. But I know S1 is equal to P cosecant alpha. I can substitute here. Then I will get P cosecant alpha into cos alpha is equal to S2. So cosecant alpha into cos alpha. Cosecant alpha into cos alpha. But cosecant alpha, you know it is 1 by sin alpha into cos alpha. So cos alpha by sin alpha, it becomes cot alpha. P into cot alpha plus S2 is equal to 0 and I will get S2 is equal to minus P cot alpha. I am getting minus. That means the initial assumed direction of tensile is wrong. Hence, it is compressive. S2 is equal to P into cot alpha that is incompressive. So, these two are the answers for the given problem.